to our panel discussion on multicultural women in engineering. Tonight, we have brought together a group of talented, accomplished and wonderful ladies here who have pursued careers in engineering and who represent a wide range of diverse backgrounds. They have wealth of experiences and this panelist here come from different cultural, racial and ethnic backgrounds and have overcome various challenges and barriers to succeed in the field of engineering. Let me introduce our first panelist here, Cheryl Dugaran. Cheryl currently is a principal engineer at WGA with over 20 years of experience in civil engineering design, in project and design management of major infrastructure projects. Cheryl brings a unique perspective to today's discussion and I'm super excited to see what she has to tell us. Let me introduce our next panelist here today, Vaishali. Vaishali is an overhead line engineer um, at Oricon with a mechanical engineering degree from Monash University. She moved to Melbourne to study engineering and started working at Oricon as a graduate. Vaishali is an advocate for women in engineering and personally Vaishali and I have shared the same space working together at Oricon so I'm super excited to see what she has got to tell us. And let me introduce the final panelist for today, the beautiful lady here, Jamila. Jamila works as a project engineer at Worley Power Services. She has a mechanical engineering degree, works in the power and new energy space, um, also specializes in operations and maintenance with a background in HSEQ. She's a refugees advocate and I'm sure she has a very interesting story to share with all of us. So I've got the first question um, for today's discussion and I'm gonna start with you, Vaishali. Uh, for individuals, access to work can be a gateway to financial independence, social connection and personal achievement. So I want to ask you if you agree or disagree. I definitely agree to that. Yeah, um, so starting with the first point, which is financial independence. When you get a job, you get that financial, um, you don't, you stop depending on whoever, whoever or whatever you were depending on before. Um, you have a constant income, so you can do whatever you want with that money. Um, whether you want, you know, your quality of life just generally improves when you have that income coming in. Um, and with social connection, it's such an important po point um, that I didn't realize up until I did get a job. Um, so my first job here in, in Australia was, was working at an Indian restaurant. Um, and again, it gave me that financial independence, but I also made a lot of friends through that, like my, work, my colleagues. Um, it was really nice to be able to um, know them outside of work um, as well as during work and you know they have your back eventually. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, it definitely gives you that social connection and that followed on through with all my other jobs. Um, and personal achievement, again, totally agree that it, you get that sense of achievement when you, you know, finish a task, whatever, whichever job you have, you have a certain number of tasks that you need to do in order to complete your job. And so, um, I, like to everyone, I, I don't know if you also agree, but like um, once you finish, take something off, off the list of things to do, it just gives you that sense, sense of, of yeah. Yeah, yeah, satisfaction. Yeah, satisfaction, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly yeah. And knowing you, Vaishali, I'm sure you would have nailed in that social connection bit. You, you're very <laughs> easy to talk to, so I've no doubt that I'm not surprised that the work gave you that opportunity. <laughs> so moving on to Jamila, I'm going to ask the same question. How did you find that um, sense of financial independence? Yeah. So same as Vishali said, I also I totally agree with her. Uh, financial freedom is admirable goal for all of us. Uh, to just have the freedom of making uh, choices of the things that we love and we get it done as well. And talking about migrants and refugees who came all along the way to Australia to build a new life, uh, having a job and being financially independent is one of our first priority to build the life that we are after. Uh, as a woman as well, financially independence is also about uh, making a, a genius ch a choices of our life. It's also expanding the capacity of making this genuine uh, choices of our life in all sphere of life as well and uh, um, the financial dependence for women as well it's our it's been the core vision of the gender equality so it's totally I totally agree it's expanded the capacity for it's expanded the capacity for me when once I started my job yeah certainly and um, 
I'm glad that you say it has expanded the capacity for you. Um, I'm happy you've, you've been able to achieve that. Um, and really, um, I'm, I'm sure you're gonna share more. There's a story to it. Um, there's a journey you've been through. We'd, we'd love to hear more of it. Moving on to Cheryl, what do you think? So uh, I'll probably, I agree with what the Jamila and Shali has said. So I'll probably not dwell too much on the financial freedom, but more about the personal satisfaction. So prior to moving to Australia almost nine years ago, I was already an experienced engineer, so more, more than a decade worth of work experience. So I'm about to step into a more leadership role. Now, for me, um, having worked through all my adult life, I yearn for that, you know, high that I get, you know, that self-satisfaction after knowing that I've done a job well. So that, that for me is the biggest factor that I would say I gained from, you know, from doing this kind of work. I would like to add about the social connection. So for me, I'm, I do socialize with some people, but for me, it's usually work home, work home. So most of my friends comes from my work environment. So moving here again nine years ago, it, I fell out of my debts because I, you know, this industry is a highly networked industry, especially here in Australia. And coming here, that was totally lost to me. So I had to build my network and, and building that network comes with its challenges as well, which maybe I will share later. So for me, you know, um, satisfaction, personal satisfaction in the social network is absolutely a key outcome of being in, in you know, finding a job in this industry. Moving on to the next questions, I'll, as a segue from what you said, um, Cheryl, we'll just continue on that making social connections and you, you had to start from scratch, build that from, you know, you've spent a decade working in another country, used to what's happening there, and then you've moved here. So what strategies, um, and you are starting in an environment that's entirely different, you bring a unique perspective, yes, but it's foreign to a lot of the information that's available here. Um, the locals work in a different manner. Uh, people who have been born and raised in this culture work in a different, have a different perspective. So obviously at times at work, you, you're gonna face that differences and it becomes evident that those differences exist. So what strategies can be used to reduce discrimination and I'm, I think discrimination is a strong word, but what strategies can be used to reduce that and increase awareness of the value that diversity and that diverse perspective can bring to the business and the broader economy? Uh, that's a very good question, uh, Rishma. So um, I would like to, to answer this question from the context from where I came from, right? From a woman with multicultural background arriving here, trying to find work in the industry, engineering industry. So to reduce discrimination against women, I think it's crucial for all levels in the business to be educated and to be made aware of the unconscious biases on gender and cultural background. Yeah, unconscious biases on gender and cultural background, definitely. And how do you think, Jamila, uh, to support the point that Cheryl was just talking about? What can we do to increase awareness about the uniqueness that diversity brings, right? Like we all bring a very unique lens to anything. And how can we increase awareness of that? Yeah, I think uh, firstly about value the individual skills, value, value their strengths and what they can bring to the team and the organization overall and light on their stories, their career. And uh, for me, I always try to be, uh, as you know me, I'm a refugee advocate. So I always try to light on, on my own story. I just try to empower th the rest of people around me, my team, my organization, people who came recently to Australia, empower them that as an individual, as a multicultural woman in engineering industry, what I have achieved, what I came through, what I went through in, in my like, refugee journey to come to Australia and how I overcome all the challenges to where I am now leading a capital engineering project in Australia. So I always focus on this part. I feel like I have this message to, to deliver to local, to migrants, to refugees, that you are able, you're capable and you can do this. 
Wonderful, brilliantly said. Um, would you like to share how personal your like the personal story you went through and your journey and? Would you like to share the message to our audience? Yeah, absolutely. So I came to Australia five years ago uh, with very, very basic English and um, um, no family, uh, no local experience. And I went through a, like a war journey back in Syria. It was a really tough journey until I finally make it, made it safe here to Australia. The first period I faced was the English language, so I, I was trying to um, study English, try to improve my language and my communication skills. And the second barrier was finding a job, which is, was really the struggle for me. I wanted, because I always wanted to be an engineer, I wanted to build my career, I wanted to have a, a better life in Australia. So this is, was my, uh, my I was ambition to, to build this successful career as a woman, as, a, as a, also as an engineer. So uh, finding the job journey was really uh, difficult. I was desperate. I didn't know where to start, what to do. So uh, what I really uh, focused on is was networking. Try to connect with people from different organizations. Search on the internet which organization can support migrants. In Australia, there's heaps of organizations that support migrants, support refugees, uh, people from overseas and Australia. Try to link them with uh, workplaces, work organization, or if we're gonna focus on engineering organization as well. So in this way, I was able to find job through one of these networking events, and that was four years ago. And since then, since then, I'm now um, same organization. I'm working as a, a site supervisor on one of our capital project in Victoria. So um, yeah, you're gonna start somewhere, you're gonna be desperate, but you are capable, you are, have resilience to come all along the way, leave your home country, to come to Australia to build a new life. You are able, you are able and you are capable as well to build this life the same way as I did. That is such a powerful message. The fact that you've just said you're, you're resilient enough to move a country. If you can do it, then what? why not this? That is such a powerful message. Thank you, Jamila. On to you, Vaishali. I know you're out there. You do a lot of volunteering with Engineers Australia. You're already starting to give back to that community. You're doing your part. How do you think we can raise awareness? Yeah, honestly, like exactly what um, Cheryl said, which is education um, and sharing stories, sharing stories about what works and what doesn't work, right? Um, sharing stories like Jamila's, for example, is so strong and so important. Um, an example of how, like, how um, positive having, how positive it can be having a multicultural woman in, or multicultural person even in your um, in your team. Yeah. Um, and when people, when people um, hear real life examples and stories of what didn't work and what works, like it's, it's a lot, it, it is definitely stronger, right? Um, it's like a lessons learned. Whenever you have you know, a project or you know, a team, whatever it is, you always go through lessons learned. And if you don't learn a lesson, then you, know, you, you repeat the same mistake, right? So um, yeah, I think um, it's, 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 I guess in my view, it is a very impactful way of, um, of I guess addressing discrimination. Yeah, and I think people connect better when the story is personal. You sort of try and show empathy, or you're, you've been through the situation yourself, so you connect better and gain an understanding and appreciation through that. So, yes, lovely answers, ladies. Thank you. Uh, can I add something about sharing stories? I always believe that you, can, you cannot be what you cannot see. So by just sharing stories, I believe that for me it affirms, it actually reminds me of what I have accomplished. And for people who probably hear my stories, it might serve as an inspiration for them that hey, somebody was able to make it, then they can too. Mm -hmm. Do you also hear the story that you share, replay it in your head? Because I do that, replay it in my head and then go, yeah, okay. Like you said, it's an affirmation for yourself you're like okay I've done this it's good what can I do better or if I've not done that enough how can I improve so those sort of lessons automatically you learn for yourself and by sharing obviously the message is out there and somebody receives it and could be beneficial so yeah thank you moving on to the next question so I'm just gonna I know we have something on useful resources so I'm gonna park for the end battling the cultural differences experience and how you've overcome challenges that came your way so jamila mentioned her story and took us through her personal challenge i'll let you start cheryl and when i was 
thinking about what to share with regards to this question, there's a lot of things that went to my mind, just like say, you know, just the challenge of getting that first interview, you know, getting, you know, shortlisted. But for me, that's all external. My biggest battle is what's inside my head, I would say. You know, um, all the questions, all the doubts that get into my mind, questioning, you know, the insecurities that comes from Maybe my accent is not that great, or my, the way I pronounce words are not correct, or just by not having the Australian education. You know, I go to a meeting and I see these people chatting about footy. I don't know anything about footy, or they're just saying, hey, you know, have you heard our classmate from university? And I, I, can't, I can't participate in this conversation. And, and moreover, that I came from my culture that I just go straight to the point. I don't do small talk. So th those are like, you know, the challenges that I had to face. So how did I overcome it? Just by grit and tenacity. So I tell myself, I prep myself in almost in the mo every day in the morning and said, hey, Cheryl, uh, I, you can do this. You, you're no different from any Jane or John out there. Um, I, I, will, I know I can do my job well. That is so interesting, Cheryl. Um, you're a principal engineer as an organization and you're sharing that you still go through that battles inside your head where you've got conflicting opinions about yourself or you have conflicting opinions on things or matters. It's reassurance to heaps of people out there that, you know, everyone, it's, it happens. Everyone, it's real, you know, the doubts. You know, I would say some people say that imposter syndrome, but I think Everyone has that, uh, men or women, but I think in my experience it's compounded because of my cultural background. Yeah. So I would say there might be some exponential effect of that, you know. Mm. But I've been blessed because I'm surrounded by mentors and allies uh, in workplaces who are not only champions for my cause, but who are actually, you know, genuine in providing feedback. You know, it might be a constructive feedback or an affirmation. So I, I'm, I'm blessed that I got that support. Finding that sponsor for yourself, especially when you work in, within the industry, um, one of my mentors has given me the same advice to me. Find someone who spon who's an ally for you. You need a sponsor. So yes, definitely having that rapport with someone gives you reaffirmation. One, it also allows the opportunity to learn from another individual because they're open to listening to you, sharing honest opinions definitely agree to what you just said and so you've been someone who has had wealth of experience from a different country working in the industry and then you migrated moving on to Vaishali quite contrary to what you've experienced she has moved here for education so you're sort of on the younger end of the spectrum try you you have you would have tried to build your career from there so what's your experience yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so again, yeah, like you mentioned, quite different, quite a different experience. So I came here um, straight out of high school to do my um, undergraduate degree. And that was a huge culture shock to me, like that in itself. Um, it definitely took me about a year, maybe two years to um, assimilate the culture around me. Um, so I guess similar but different. Um, similar as you would have sort of um, experienced in the workplace I would have sort of experienced at uni you know every most people know most people um, and like you said small talk um, super foreign to me would not would not know how to start a conversation to be honest um, but I guess what I or how I overcame this was just absorbing everything around me, you know, absorbing the culture, um, pushing myself out of my comfort zone was probably like the main thing. Um, pushing myself out of my comfort zone, um, talking to people who I sit next to in a lecture hall um, on a bus that I would never do <laughs> back home. Um, and out of that, I have managed to achieve a lot of things. It's, it's, it's made me who I am today. Um, like I got multiple friends through that, um, got multiple jobs through, you know, talking to people. Yeah. Um, honestly, <laughs> that is the, my advice. What's the most quirkiest <laughs> job you've done? The quirkiest job? Um, yeah. 
quirky. I think I, I don't think I've had a quirky job. I okay. think I had. So I've worked in the hospitality industry. Right, okay. Um, worked at a bakery and um, at an Indian restaurant. Okay. Um, both really interesting experiences. Yeah. <laughs> Got free bread, which is which is you know oh, the best part. <laughs> Um, okay. But I did. I did then have like um, engineering related yep. um, uh, jobs as well. So a, lot, a few um, internships yeah. throughout university, um, which a lot of people struggled to to get because being an international student, it sort of limits you as to um, who um, hires you um, because you don't have a full like you don't have. First of all, you have um, limited work hours. Um, but second of all, you, they don't know whether you're going to stay in Australia, so they probably don't want to invest that time. But there are quite a few companies out there um, that will take you on. And it's just a matter of doing the research and getting, putting yourself out there, um, honestly, is what I would say. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely agree to that. Um, yeah, I've, I've myself been through a similar journey as yours, especially um, started here doing my university degree, so I went through a similar journey. Um, I've done all sorts of quirky jobs, my favorite one being, you know, the Moomba Festival that happens every yeah. year. I've been a ride operator on one of the the adventure rides of the festival, and that was my favorite one, two <laughs> days. Amazing. Not yeah. my engineering job. Yeah. But yes. Free access to the festival. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 you probably get to meet Yeah, so that people, was the best so. part, right? Like yeah. I, could, I could hop on every ride for free and that was my favorite part. <laughs> but yeah, um, really, really um, a good journey from there till today. Um, working as an engineering advisor for an engineering consultancy here. So again, putting myself out there has been the best thing that has happened to me. Opportunities came along, like similar, talking to people in trams and you know, whatnot. So yeah, um, agree to that. Do you prefer to give a different opinion or share a story to these two? Yeah, for I'm, I'm waiting yeah. for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, like the, the most challenging part was when I started work uh, in Australia and the, the work environment, the work culture is totally different from back home. Uh, the first day when I got a job, it's just like a funny story. One of my colleagues introduced me to my manager. She said, oh, he's, this is Matt, he's our manager. I said, why are you saying Matt? It's like Mr. Matt or something. She says, no, we don't say this in Australia. I was like, okay, just I call him his name. So I was like, it was a really funny story, but I always remember and smile. Like this is the small rules that it's unwritten rules of the war culture. This is make difference. But I was really grateful for having a really good mentors and friends around me, colleagues that really supported me. So having a mentor and also like a very supportive colleagues around me really helped me. And also like I work for an organization where diversity and inclusion is really implemented. So this has really helped me to get along with my peers and also feeling, getting that feeling of belonging as well. Um, the other point I also always use it and help me to, to get along with the, with the culture here is showing my own culture, the Syrian culture. Uh, through like showing, like telling stories, uh, showing photos, video from back home, also through food. The food one, it was really good, <laughs> good, good, like a good way to, to be introduced to, to get along with people here as well. People here local are really friendly and they would like to, to learn and know more about the culture. So I used it to just cook, do some Australian foods and bring to work and invite friends over. And uh, through that, I really have a very strong friendships and uh, long, like a very strong, uh, relations people around here and making uh, good networks you're meeting good networks, good networks. <laughs> last question and we're gonna start with Jamila again I'll, you can continue so the theme for this year's International Women's Day is embrace equity and equity recognizes that each person has different circumstances which we all are aware of and appreciated as well and allocates the exact resources and opportunities needed to reach an equal outcome as future managers and leaders, how can we facilitate or advocate this? International Women's Day theme this year is one of my favorite topics because it's really important for us to understand the difference between equal equity and equality. Equality is about giving all the individual the same opportunities. On the other hand, the equity is about giving each like each individual have different circumstances and then I will give them these opportunities based on their circumstances circumstances and also backgrounds. Uh, it's really important to understand as well that we are all not the same place to start up with. Yeah. As a leader, I, I really truly believe that we are able to forge an award equal and inclusive board. Yeah. Thank you, Jamila. Over to you, Vashali. 
Um, yeah, so totally agree with what um, Jamila has said. Um, and in addition to that, how, so the question is, um, the embracing equity. Embracing equity, yeah. How, how do we do that um, as leaders? So learn who your team members are. I think that it's really important um, to get to know who you're working with. Um, because if you don't know who you're working with, then how will you know what they need? Um, you need to make it a safe space for them to approach you yeah. when, some, when they need something. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and also learn about what, what their goals are, um, what their circumstances are. Um, and once you do know that, then you are able to actually embrace that equity. Yeah. Yourself, Cheryl? Okay, so I'm a mother, right, to two young kids. So I'll probably Can I just say you don't look like. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I have two kids. You know, I, I love them both equally, but I show my love to them in a different way, recognizing that they have different temperaments, even though they are raised by both parents within the same household. So applying the same principle into my team, I'm often called like a, you know, I'm a very nurturing leader. So I, I do recognize that. So for me, as a future leader or as a current leader in my workplace, taking the same principle, I need to look, at, I need to provide a space where an individ, a person's individual characteristics is being recognized and celebrated. Like say, um, taking on point your example about you know, um, equality versus equity. Like say, if there is an opportunity for somebody to, uh, for, you know, there's a space in our team, we're looking for somebody to step up. Now, recognizing that women are not really the type to raise their hand unless they take all the boxes, right? So for me, recognizing that maybe one of my team members here, he's a lady, you know, is not, this lady might not raise her hand. So, and recognizing that barrier, I would then seek you know, consciously seek her out. You know, we have this new position. Would you be wanting, are you interested to apply for it? So, you know, being conscious about the individual's personality, the barrier that person might be facing. Uh, for me, that's a key one. Yeah, so, and also, you know, providing that space or the culture in, in the workplace where it is okay, you know, where it is okay to be different. Like for me, as you know, I work in a design company and I recognize that to actually design a road or something, there are so many ways to do it. So it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as we're all working towards the same goal. Yeah. yeah? So for me, th that in itself is a key one on yeah. embracing, embracing individual strength. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's where the power of diversity comes, comes in now because you know, I get the advantage of different perspectives. Yeah, mm -hmm. very beautifully said. Like it's it's also creating that inclusive space where you feel heard. Mm -hmm. You somebody's listening to you and acknowledging your capabilities, exactly the manner you want them to. Then you feel safe. You feel valued, and then you perform better. So it's all interconnected, and it's, you very beautifully articulated that. Let me thank all three of you beautiful ladies for joining me today. I'm sure all the information you've shared is going to benefit heaps of people out there who listen to our show today. If there's any last message you want to share, please do. Um, one of the useful resources really I can, I can advise is the networking events. There's heaps of networking events happening a all along the organization, the workplace, just go search for it. Uh, one of these resource engineer Australia, they have a heaps of networking events. You can go and talk to engineers, introduce yourself, expand your network. And also there's other like of organization who support migrants and also refugees like EMS Australia. They have a lot of programs and uh, uh, like workshops that support immigrants who came recently to Australia and looking for a job or looking to connect with other organization and for for myself what i do to as a resources to help new uh, who came recently to australia as a refugee or also uh, in general as a migrant i i try to do a lot of workshops that help help these people who recently came to australia to find a job to connect with this organization so i connect this uh, like migrant or organization with these engineering uh, workplaces through having a lot like a workshop with people there, volunteers that they helping them with their CV, finding a job, uh, updating a letter, cover letter, just prepare them 
to, to know about the Australian work culture overall. So um, you can have this as a, as a tip from me. Yeah, definitely useful, which ties in well with uh, Vaishali, your experience in engineering Australia. Well, how has that helped you? Yeah, um, so like exactly what Jamila said, and I mentioned earlier, networking events is, you know, super key um, to, you know, making those connections um, that would help you now and also in the future. Um, and Engineers Australia, like she mentioned, um, so if you go, if you um, are a member, you do get um, weekly emails on what's happening, um, what events they have, webinars, networking events, etc. But also if you have a LinkedIn page, which I highly recommend having, um, please follow, please go and follow um, all the Engineers Australia pages, um, you know, for, I'm, I'm on the committee for women in engineering um, for the Victoria division and so we advertise all our events through our LinkedIn page um, and in addition to that there's also other um, I guess resources so depending on which industry you're interested in for example if you're in, in, interested in the energy industry there's the Australian Institute of Energy that you can just google and you can get in touch with them um, as well as rail. So if, if you're interested in rail, there's the Australian Railway Association. So there's a lot, a lot of um, opportunities and events and um, I guess, yeah, areas in which you can, um, you know, delve into to learn more about the Australian culture that will really help you um, in your journey here. Yeah. And very quickly, Cheryl, did you have a lot? Of I'll just add something. So with the power of hindsight now, I would say LinkedIn profile. You know, very important that you update your LinkedIn profile. You know, you make sure that your personal brand is really good, you know. And and for me that's it really and it's instead of Facebook to LinkedIn. But thanking you again and we'll speak soon. Thank you.